Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Christina Fox, the CEO of Tech Alliance, and I hope you enjoyed some of those campfire tunes and that crackle in the background. Today is a Canadian plaid is optional, and so is a beer. It's a bit early in the morning, but I hope that you'll enjoy our experience today. As the Regional Innovation Center for Southwestern Ontario, Tech Alliance is committed to people who have big hopes, big dreams, and see big opportunities. We are the place for dreamers, innovators, and world-changing ideas, and we are focused on building a globally competitive innovation economy that enables entrepreneurship, spurs accelerated growth, attracts ambitious talent and new companies. So before we get started, everyone is muted on this call. Uh, feel free to add any questions in the Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen. And today's fireside chat will be recorded and available. Uh, please join me in welcoming members of our boards of directors, Peter Dillon and Gord Hart. Peter has 30 years experience working with startups, growth stage national and international brands. Peter leads Siskin's tech privacy and cybersecurity team and is a trusted advisor to presidents and CEOs on matters related to business acquisitions, strategic business decisions, product licensing, distribution agreements, and other issues that affect enterprise viability, survival, and prosperity. Welcome, Peter. Happy to be here, thank you. Excellent. I wish, I wish you'd told me it was too early for a beer, though. <laughs> hey, to each his own. <laughs> Uh, so also, since the early 90s, Gord Hart has provided expert advice to hundreds of innovative, high-growth organizations ranging from startups to Fortune 500 companies. He is the president and CEO of SelectPath and is, uh, has been charged with developing the long-range vision um, of the organization in addition to overseeing business operations. His innovative approach to benefits and pension planning has led to the creation of many solutions, including the Beneflex family of collective purchasing plans. Welcome, Gord. Hello. Thanks, Christina. Thanks for having me. Excellent. What I also love about uh, Gord and Peter is that, that they've heavily been invested in our community, are outstanding leaders, and are involved in the investor community, the angel networks, and have some insight, you know, outside of their professional world on what it means to build community and what it means to ensure that startups have the opportunity to thrive and grow right here in London and region. So today marks the second of our Fireside Chat series this summer. And today we're looking at the idea of what you, can, what you can't prepare or attempting to answer your most pressing questions around legal issues, financial planning, employer obligations, access to benefits, interruption insurance, insurance, and other business challenges that arise during uncertain times. We are really fortunate to have two experts here to help plan for dynamic situations. So today around the bonfire, we will talk about preparing for the unpredictable, otherwise known as putting out fire after fire after fire. So we'll get started with a couple of questions that we have prepared and questions that came in in advance of our fireside chat. Uh, Peter, I'm gonna start with you and then Gord, I'm gonna go to you and we'll go through a couple of those questions. I'll keep my eye on the Q&A feature to see if anything comes in from the audience today. And then we've got sort of a special treat towards the end. So Peter, let's get started with you. Do I need to radically realign my workforce and my workplace policies? Well, I'm a lawyer, right? So the answer is always going to be, it depends. Um, you know, this, this stuff uh, always involves a, a cycle, right? Wherever you find yourself, um, you know, you're, you're in a, a situation. Um, so the first question is, have you planned for that situation? And I, I blogged about uh, this at the beginning of, of uh, um, COVID and, and said, you know, who among you had a business continuity plan that envisaged a global pandemic, a wholesale removal of your workforce to a, a work from home? Of course, the answer was nobody. Um, now we have the incident um, and we will hopefully sooner rather than later, be moving into a, uh, a period of reflection where there are lessons learned. Um, we, um, we <coughs> excuse me, um, analyze where, where things fell apart um, and, and how to prepare ourselves for, you know, the next wave, um, the next fill in the blank, right? So in, in terms of uh, the, the workforce in particular, uh, it, it really does depend. I mean, there are a couple of local success stories like, you know, VidHug or, or Foggit who are crazily ramping up um, because 
you know, um, th this, uh, this pandemic has presented them with a, a business opportunity. Um, <clears throat> nothing wrong with that. I mean, th these folks are out helping people. Um, there are others, um, I'm, you know, happy to report that uh, our firm um, is kind of revenue neutral uh, year over year through the, the pandemic so far. Uh, and happily, we've been able to maintain our entire workforce. Um, everybody got sent home. That's another story that we might touch on later. Um, but for us, it was important to kind of protect our family and, and maintain um, stability uh, in, in their lives and, and in, our, in our business. But then there are the businesses, of course, that have been hit hard by this. Um, there was a report from the CIBC uh, that uh, was estimating that 20% of Canadian restaurants will never reopen. Um, there was a story last week uh, in, in the press about uh, British Airways allegedly taking advantage of the, uh, the situation to, you know, realign its, its workforce. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to comment on, on, on that, but, you know, the bottom line is that if your business is going to survive, you need to remain profitable. Um, labor costs are typically, you know, a, a, a big part um, of, of anyone's um, balance sheet. Um, and, and so, you, you know, you've, you've, you've got to examine uh, the, uh, the, the issues and, and, and make some radical decisions. Uh, one, one other example, um, I was talking to uh, a client of mine that owns a, a few Wendy's restaurants. And he said that his sales were uh, consistent, you know, pre and, and, and post, or, or sorry, his, 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 his bottom line. Uh, was was consistent. Um, so although his sales had dropped, his expenses had dropped considerably. Uh, and so, you know, looking forward to the the post COVID, you know, what does that mean for for fast food? Well, you know, it may mean that people have become a lot more accustomed to, um, you know, skip the dishes and and other delivery services or or, or takeout, and that you're not going to find the same kind of investment in, in bricks and mortar. Uh, because if if uh, if a Wendy's franchisee can make as much money with a drive-through, well then why invest um, in 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 the bricks and mortar? Now, the 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 obvious downside is that the fast food sector, in particular, employs a lot of of Canadians. So, uh, you know, what does the new normal look like uh, from that perspective? I'm I'm afraid that um, that there's going to be uh, there there's there's going to be some workforce. Um, realignment mm -hmm. so but I guess I, I'd, I'd conclude my comment on this Christina by saying that uh, the time to start planning uh, this was yesterday mm -hmm. I, I, I love that you brought up even the concept of brick and mortar um, I'm sure those on the call and, and who are listening um, heard about our, our announcement for digital Main Street where we get to be involved in a larger project that's related to future proofing so when we talk about preparing for the unpredictable, the concept of working with Main Street businesses who have traditionally had brick and mortar and really helping them to propel and have that experience, whether it's just you know originally standing up a website and deploying e-commerce to really exploring more contemporary digital marketing, that concept of future proofing is exactly embedded in today's discussion about how do you prepare for the things you don't know that are coming and how are you making sure that you can remain um, profitable and that you can have a customer reach that is maybe not related to, to foot traffic. So I really like the timing of um, our discussion today and some of the things that we've been engaged in on behalf of our community. Uh, and that's one of the, the new announcements. So I felt like I had to make that plug because uh, <laughs> you set me up perfectly for it. <laughs> uh, so, so Gordon, I'm gonna come over to you then. What are some of the key tools available to help um, the workforce navigate the pandemic? So, um, you know, Christina, you can, you can Google benefits and I'd be interested to see what pops up because it's anything and everything uh, that people decide are beneficial to them. <clears throat> and so, you know, when we look at this laundry list of, of perks and products, um, you know, organizations have unlimited options. Um, but, but I think what we're finding 
is COVID's really taught people to slow down, um, spend a little bit more time on understanding elements and understanding what their toolbox needs to look like. And, and most importantly, you know, looking at what would be important to address the unpredictable factors within your workforce. And so, you know, I'll give you four really good examples of, of products or services that, that I think should be in every employer's toolbox. Um, the first and foremost, virtual doctor. Um, you know, the, the days of sitting in um, urgent care or potentially uh, a walk-in clinic are done. Um, Ontario was already uh, along the road of, of providing uh, fees to physicians for virtual care pre-COVID. And then they expedited it uh, when COVID hit. So, you know, when you think about your staff and their health and you think about productivity, keeping them healthy, keeping their family healthy, keeping them at work, getting care when they need it, where they need it, um, I don't think people will go back to the traditional going to the doctor, waiting in a, in a wait room because it's not unnecessary. And so to me, that's one valuable tool. And, and in Ontario, it's free. Uh, there are a lot of vendors out there selling this service, but realistically, it's available to any Ontarian at no charge. So that's, to me, a really critical piece. Um, you know, with three kids, taking time off work or taking time out to take kids to a doctor's visit that I know the outcome, what the outcome's going to be, really, it doesn't make sense. So having that service available huge productivity gain. Second is, um, you know, we're into year X of, of Bell's Let's Talk. Um, mental health is front and center. And the pandemic has taught us that resiliency differs for every individual within your organization. Um, us introverts, you know, love the idea of not having to do all of the things that you extro extroverts love to do. Uh, so, so we just we're just thriving in in some of some of the restrictions. But, you know, the reality is it's a concern for all stakeholders in the economy, and and the pandemic has magnified some of those issues. So, what we're seeing is progressive employers are interested in engaging in the topic. They're looking at adding tools like cognitive behavior therapy, employee assistance programs, enhancing services for counseling and support. Because again, a, a healthy mental health uh, workforce is, is product, productivity at its best. They're going to be engaged, they're going to be mindful uh, of the work, and you're building resiliency for the next event that comes along, which I'm sure will come at some point. The, the third is, is kind of this move to personalization, and it's around the idea of, of adding elements to your program, whether it's pet insurance or it's voluntary benefits, but giving employees access, a marketplace, if you will, to be able to access services that, that you're already curating and, and delivering into to your workforce. Um, everybody wants to press the easy button. And so organizations who can provide this marketplace to, to their workforce is providing an environment, a culture, a brand that is unique to that organization and makes it very sticky uh, for employees to stay within that environment because they're increasing their engagement. The last, and again, we're, we also are on the wealth management side, financial planning. Uh, I can't tell, tell you enough how important it is for people to have a plan, have goals, have milestones, and make sure that as things happen, as, as life happens, that, that they know where they're going to go and how they're going to navigate it. And to me, you know, one would think planning is, is natural. It isn't. It's not a natural, uh, you know, uh, skill set for most people. But this idea of coaching and planning and sticking to a plan, I think, is critically important as people are anxious and uneasy about frequent change. So there's four areas that organizations, if they want to be progressive, can easily step into. Most don't have a cost. Some do. But what you're really talking about is engagement. And, and you're talking about having a culture uh, of safety and protection. And when you look back at you know, Maslow's theory of hierarchy of needs, safety, comfort, right at the bottom, the most important, it's a pillar. And so organizations really have to be mindful of that. And, and I think the world's evolved from everyone's out for themselves to, no, 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 we're a tribe, we're an organization, we're, we're gonna care for each other. 
And I think the pandemic has really helped us understand the importance of that. Thanks, Gord. I find your commentary really helpful, very hopeful, um, and rather inspiring. And, and one of the things that I have found through this pandemic and in working with uh, technology companies and innovators across our region is there has been a really significant focus on mental health supports in a way that is, you know, with distance primarily propelled through technology. And, um, and I think, you know, as we see an increase in rise in that, the, the access and the capability to, to support resiliency, to reach out for help uh, is, is going to be more accessible. And uh, I think that's a really important piece. There's a question that's come in from the Q&A that I, I wonder if you might be able to address um, specifically related to mental health. Has there been an increase in mental health issues and claims due to COVID-19, um, sort of from your professional background? Yeah, so, so we have line of sight um, across pretty much every industry in Canada, multiple regions. And, and I would say that there has been an uptick on short term. So this could be EI claims related to um, challenges associated with being able to stay in the workforce or um, issues that will potentially or could lead to a longer term uh, claim. There is no doubt that we are seeing an influx of these types of, of claims. Now, some of them, I have to say, are, are, are caused by the fact that there are government supporting funding models today. Um, and so some of them um, can be, um, uh, are being impacted by the availability of, of income for those individuals who can't actively work. Beyond that though, um, when you start to talk about people's ability to be resilient and dealing with, with anxiety and dealing with mental health issues through the pandemic, we are seeing an increase. And what we're seeing is an increase due to uncertainty of future. We're seeing an in increase due to coping mechanisms and skills. We're also seeing an increase because you have now these family units who have compressed and are now spending 24 seven together who aren't used to having that kind of interaction. And so what we're seeing from insurance companies are they are increasing their pricing associated to incidents, which means how many claims they're seeing and we're seeing an upward trend. So yes, for sure, we're seeing an upward trend associated with mental health, but there are a number of levers that are causing that. And, and as some of those levers disappear, it will be interesting to see how it has an impact on, on the incidence uh, of, of disability. Okay. Thanks, Gord. I appreciate that. Um, there's another question related to uh, work remote, but I think I'm going to start with, with Peter on a question, and then I may come back to you, Gord, on this one. So for Peter, do, do I need to radically realign my workspace requirements and designs? Um, can you comment on that? Sure. Um, I, I, again, Christina, the answer is, is, is going to be uh, it, it depends. Um, again, kind of taking a, a, a personal example, um, as you know, we're moving from our existing building to new space in, in the city center. Um, and we were kind of well into the, uh, the, the floor plan and, and layout uh, and, and design when uh, we sent 300 people home with their computers. Uh, and so now we're thinking, well, um, what does this mean? Um, and, and so for us, um, you know, as, as uh, somebody pointed out to me, you know, just because you um, uh, have the ability to work from home isn't the same as being required um, to work for, from home. And, um, you know, we were touching on the mental health uh, aspects of this uh, beforehand. We, we've also, as a, as a company, been very um, cognizant of, uh, of that issue. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, at the risk of overzooming people, um, we, we have mandated uh, team meetings by, by Zoom um, and, and kind of, kind of um, cross-pollinated that with with different groups just so and and you know what um, video is mandatory you can't just be on there with um, with uh, with with sound because we want to we want I mean we're social creatures and, and we want to um, maintain that uh, that contact and and uh, 
you know, we're, we're there as a family to, uh, to watch out for, for our coworkers. So rolling that forward, uh, we've, we've decided that, you know, we're, we're not going to move to a, uh, a work from home uh, mode. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're, we're going to maintain uh, our plan to, you know, occupy as many floors uh, as, as we had uh, previously. Um, the, the social distancing has impacted the, the workstation size uh, and, and office uh, design. Um, a, a little bit, but we we feel for our business that uh, you know being present, um, you know being collaborative. We've designed you know espresso bars and and uh, you know cool places for people to hang out so that they hang out um, because we we view that social interaction whether they're talking about you know their kids' baseball game on the weekend or the file they're working on um, both are are, are valuable. And, and we want to uh, we we want to maintain that, but we did you know I did give the example earlier of uh, of a business um, that was traditionally thought of as being uh, bricks and mortars, and, and I and I think um, that there will be uh, a, a move to uh, um, uh, a, away from. Um, just a pure reliance on on on, on bricks and mortar. The, the other aspect of this is, at the same time as we're we're moving uh, offices, uh, I'm I'm moving my house, and and we're we're doing a renovation, and you know believe it or not, um, our our floor plan didn't include a, a workspace like a dedicated workspace, uh, and that was fine because when when I was working remotely previously. Um, you know, I could, I could squirrel away in, in, a, in a corner or everyone, you know, my wife was at work, my kids were at school. Um, now I've got, you know, kids um, on, on their online call. I've got my wife next to me on, on her online, online calls. Our, our, our uh, internet is, is tapped out. Um, and, and so, you know, part of, uh, of workspace planning, I think, for the new normal has to include what do you have at home, right? Um, you know, do we use a virtual background or, or do you see the clutter that's, uh, that's behind me, uh, you know, behind the virtual fireplace here? Um, so again, uh, I, I, I guess I, I end this comment the same way I, I, I did with my first, which was that um, the, the time to start planning that is yesterday. Yeah. It's so true. There's there's so there's so many ideas that you brought forward that are are worth commenting on. I I think you know even when Gord said about introverts versus extroverts, I I wanted to holler introverts check on your extrovert friends because we're not okay. And so it's experiences like these when we get to you know have a conversation that are really important to to many people and the idea of being social beings and your workplace is moving and and as have we at Tech Alliance making our shift from the research park to our, you know, our vibrant downtown location and so much hope that we had about our social spaces and uh, the cool kitchens and uh, the collision spaces. We were so eager to open those doors and create some significant energy and a, and a gathering place for our technology community. And we're looking at that differently too. You know, how do we create a, a workspace or a gathering space that is safe and still allows the kind of interaction that we that we all need. And, and I have found, you know, in reaching out to connections in my network and certainly through members of the board, you know, how people are developing their, their safe reentry models and how are they choosing to get people to and from work, um, you know, whether or not they're keeping full remote. And it's, you know, it's really still a lot of anyone's guess. But what I have really enjoyed about the value of the network in our area is that if you ask, people will share. And so I think it was kind of important to raise that a little bit today to see you know, how are people progressing on um, some of the, the planning that's related to workspace requirements and design and, um, and being sort of genius about what that's going to look like. Maybe I'll, I'll ask then, Gord, of you a, a question um, related to benefits for employees working remotely. The actual question that was asked was, are there things that need to be considered if we have more employees working remotely for benefits. Are you able to um, cover that a little bit, Gord? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I think there's, there's two elements. There's contractual obligation and then composition. And um, I think from a contractual standpoint, very few 
benefit plan contracts, pension plan contracts, um, have a requirement that the individual works on site. So, so where they reside, work from home, work on site, isn't an issue unless the unless where they're working um, puts them in it to a different jurisdiction. So there are some complexities around you know where you're residing at work versus you know where you're being insured. So assuming that we're just talking about people in Ontario and they may be working in Muskoka rather than working in downtown Toronto, no worries. That that shouldn't be a concern. Around composition, I think you know just to expand a little bit. Uh, I think there's this tremendous opportunity for organizations, you know, as they face these threats or opportunities of the, the pandemic, is to, to kind of pivot and reorganize what it looks like and what the elements of total compensation look like, uh, which it would include, you know, facilities, tools, et cetera. And I think what we've come to realize ourselves is we shot 55 people out into the atmosphere to work from home is that you know our staff and we again we do this full time you know benefits is our business everyone's unique and what we've taken this opportunity to realize is well <clears throat> you know if everyone's unique then why don't we start focusing on the uniqueness and starting to develop our organizational structure and plans around this uniqueness um, treating everyone exactly the same doesn't make sense and Logistically, you can't in some situations. So I think it's opened our eyes to, to you know, this opportunity to really cherish the uniqueness of our staff and really start to focus on what's meaningful and, and trying to deliver what's meaningful in an efficient fashion. It doesn't have to be overly complex. It could be just an element of choice and, and really engaging in that choice, understanding risk management, but, but engaging in that choice. So uh, it's, it's, you know, again, we're, we're seeing this pandemic as a real opportunity to, to rethink what we do and how we do it. That's terrific. So any, so would you say, you know, in addition to that, do you see any other opportunities for organizations during the pandemic um, or any other major trends that will change, um, that, that will change with benefits or will change benefits? Anything more to add to that? Yeah, I, I think realistically, if, if you don't have a flexible benefit plan, good luck surviving, uh, you know, as we get back into, you know, the talent war, because it's coming again, it will come. And, and really, people are demanding personalization, P people are demanding choice, uh, they want to play part in decision making. And so I would say to organizations, you know, you need to start thinking about introducing elements of choice. Um, it increases engagement, it can decrease risk, and this isn't about, you know, setting up an account, letting people draw down on that account. This is really about understanding risk and, and providing a solution that is efficient and sustainable while still driving greater engagement. So, you know, people are going to get sick hearing from me about flex, but it is the way to go. It is, it is life now, and so get used to it and start thinking about how you're going to implement it. I love that. I mean, and involving others in creating that plan, engaging them in the early dialogue about what this could look like and how this will look and what are the needs of the team. You know, we've had those critical conversations in our team over the course of the last few months, or the last, you know, nine months. And um, we are looking forward to, you know, how is it that we, we, we pivot our own model? How do we create space? How do we um, engage further in the community? And how do we do that by virtue of making sure that we have happy, healthy, members of our team who are engaged in what the future of work is for them and for everyone. So I, you make really good points there. Thank you for sharing. Um, so shifting gears then. So Peter, I'm going to talk with you a little bit more about data protection technology because that's uh, really is, uh, centered in your wheelhouse. So do I need to radically realign my data protection technology and procedures? Do you want to take that on? Well, you did. Um, <laughs> starting about, you know, um, March, 30th or, or so, yeah. um, the, the um, you know, they're, they're obviously, we're going to be dissecting this probably um, for the next century uh, in terms of, you know, strategies that work, strateg strategies that didn't work, um, all kinds of, you know, geopolitics uh, uh, involved, um, um, you know, various things that, that, you know, we anticipate to fall out. Uh, in the future that are, are kind of developing now that haven't manifested. 
So one is, um, you know, we'll probably have a, a, a spike in, in the birth rate uh, about nine months out. Um, and uh, conversely, we'll probably have a spike in um, the divorce rate. <laughs> so depends what your uh, work from home uh, experience was, was like. Um, but a- another uh, um, phenomenon that um, in, in people in privacy and cybersecurity are, are uh, more or less banking on is a um, uh, 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 bubble uh, of, uh, of, of cyber uh, attacks mm-hmm. um, because typically um, uh, a threat actor uh, who has gained access to a, uh, a system lies dormant somewhere you know around six months on average. Um, there, there has been a, uh, uh, a you know some journalists have reported uh, a, a fivefold increase in hacking uh, activity um, and uh, so. Yeah, there there were all kinds of measures um, that should have been taken um, to support a, a work from home um, uh, environment. Uh, if they haven't uh, taken place, uh, again, you know, uh, as the saying goes, the best time to plant an oak tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today, and and so um, uh, things like uh, multi-factor authentication um, uh, almost. Uh, at least nine out of out of ten um, uh, hacks uh, have uh, can be prevented through multi-factor authentication. So if your enterprise isn't using that, uh, that's that's. If, if I leave one takeaway from today's chat, um, that would be it. Um, but there are a whole host of of uh, uh, other um, uh, policies and procedures, whether it's it's. Uh, proper endpoint protection and, and antivirus. Um, uh, work from home policies need to deal with what device uh, employees are using. You know, typically my, my laptop uh, from the firm um, is, is uh, monitored remotely by our uh, security services provider. So they're running patches, they're updating uh, my uh, antivirus and endpoint protection without me having to do anything. Um, if, if your staff uh, are using their personal uh, computer, chances are almost certain uh, that they're not providing the same level of protection uh, to that um, uh, device. Um, we, uh, you know, the, 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 the whole issue of endpoint protection and the, um, um, the vulnerability of, of, of systems um, is... Uh, a growing one because uh, every, everything now has access to your your system. I mean, smart watches, your smartphone. Um, uh, an, another um, true story about my firm, and we're we're pretty fussy about our security. Um, every year, we engage um, a firm to um, um, to uh, uh, run a penetration test of our systems, and uh, basically, these are you know, ethical hackers, people that are paid to uh, hack our, our system. So, you know, they'll do things like leave uh, USB drives in the parking lot and see how many employees come in and plug them into their computer. Um, they'll phone our help desk and, and try to get them to, to give out um, credentials. Um, this, this time, um, they found that a, a new security system uh, with uh, perimeter cameras that we had uh, installed to uh, keep an eye on the, uh, the, the premises um, had not updated uh, the password from the, uh, the uh, manufacturer's um, standard um, password. So they accessed the camera system, ran uh, a series of you know, typical manufacturer's passwords, and bingo, they're, they're inside our system. Now, these guys are, are white hat, they're, they're paid to do that, and they say, hey, you got to block this. Um, but the point is, um, you know, to, to kind of paraphrase Voltaire, the, the, the price of freedom is e- eternal vigilance. And um, this is not any longer the kind of thing that, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get around to that. Um, because um, if, you're, if you're serious about building a brand and serious about being profitable, uh, then both of those things can be taken away from you or, or at least severely uh, detrimentally impact by 
failing to to pay attention uh, to your cyber health. You know, it's it's now a, a C-suite um, uh, agenda item. Uh, you know, starting with the CEO and 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 working its its way down. So again, um, uh, once again, once again, my my final point is uh, better to have started yesterday. Uh, but if you haven't, um, get started now. Terrific, thank you. So Gord, I have um, my last question for you and then Peter, I'm gonna try and come back to you about a merger and acquisition question um, and just doing a time check. We're at 11.39 and I absolutely wanna do our rapid fire. So we might just stay on the call a few minutes long if that's okay with everybody. Sure. So Gord, over to you for your, your final question. How to, so, and, and actually working with you on sort of the other side of your business where you've got the, the wealth management. So how do founders mitigate the financial risk that's tied up in their businesses? Sure. So, I mean, I, I think there's really nine things. There's probably more, but I'm going to keep it to nine. Okay. Uh, so, cause I don't like tens. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so first and foremost is business structure. I mean, that one's very easy incorporating, limiting, you know, personal liabilities, you know, and talk to any lawyer that's, you start there. Um, you know, then, then I think really the next is, is identifying key advice partners. Um, no, no two advisors are exactly the same. And so understanding how important they are and how it evolves over time and really getting the right people in your inner circle will help you in your, your decision-making process strategically. Also, you know, sourcing people with various backgrounds uh, and experience just gives you a more fulsome perspective uh, as your business evolves. I'd say, you know, can't be an insurance broker and not talk about risk transfer. Um, you know, realistically, you pretty much insure everything and anything you ever want to. I think you just need to do some business analysis around what do you want to transfer? What do you want to keep yourself? Um, and again, going back to advisors, finding brokers and advisors who understand your business and understand the risks, uh, lawyers, accountants, insurance brokers, they'll all help guide you around what's a proper risk transfer and what's not. Um, of course, revisiting, you know, working in your business and on your business is that whole push and pull that entrepreneurs have. Um, understanding, you know, risk reward analysis. Um, you know, anyone who's done a business course, this is like table stakes. Uh, I still do it to this point. Um, you know, decision making circles around, you know, does this make sense? Does it not? A good tried and true piece of paper. Maybe there's an app. It, it makes sense because it really does challenge your thinking. Um, you know, partnerships and joint ventures, uh, this is another area where, you know, make your, um, you know, non-essential services someone else's essential services. You know, I think there's a ton of opportunity for collaboration. I think Tech Alliance is absolutely the environment for collaboration and organizations really working together. I think this will only expand and, and will only become more important for organizations. You can't do everything. So really focus on what your core competencies are and find a partner who can, can deliver on the back end. And you're seeing that a lot with, with mergers and acquisitions and strategic alliances. You know, let's, let's maximize our potentials by potentially giving up a small portion of, of uh, an economic benefit for the greater opportunity that exists in the marketplace. Um, of course, you know, record and controls, you know, having processes, making sure you follow them, Having measurables, measuring data, milestones, critically important to any organization because you have to be able to answer how you doing now. And whether that's your lending institution, that's an angel investor, um, that, you know, that's a business partner, that's a staff member, mm -hmm. understanding your key performance indicators and having levers to pull, critically important to the success of an organization. Um, manageable debt, I know this is a tough one because debt is cheap right now. It won't be at some point. So, you know, learning to scale your business um, with the, what the minimal debt that you can possibly take on makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I get that may be counterintuitive to, to what organizations are suggesting, but there's a whole lot of data around performance, PE firms versus, you know, the regular market. And, and there's this discussion that PE firms outperform and the data is saying they don't. Mm -hmm. um, and part of it is just the sheer leverage of debt and the burden of debt. And, and I think we're going to see some organizations being challenged over the next little while associated with that. Um, and then I'd say self-reflect, you know, don't take yourself too seriously, challenge yourself, 
my spouse is the best pessimist I, I've ever found and keeps me honest. Um, but again, that, that self-reflection I think is really important, again, when you're working on the business. And then last, and this one we see all the time, financial plan. It's great to be an entrepreneur. It's great to pile your net worth into a business and scale it up. That's the best investment you can possibly make, make the investment in you and your business. But bad things happen. And so you need to really have a plan and stick to it. Just as important it is for your employees to have a plan for success, entrepreneurs need to have a plan for success too and mitigate risks. Okay. That's terrific. And I, I feel like you did, you started to touch on um, mergers and acquisitions. So I think I'll have Peter, you um, jump in on that too. Do you think there's going to be um, mergers and acquisitions because of the fallout of COVID? So we're preparing for the unpredictable and now we're doing some predictions. Uh, oh, big time. Um, I, I mean, you know, the old adage is uh, buy low, sell high. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been through three pretty significant uh, market crashes. Um, and uh, th this will, will certainly be a, uh, a buying opportunity. Um, I have heard that uh, the, the, the poor Italians are, are suffering uh, a spate of, of kind of foreign acquisitions uh, of, of their uh, battered uh, industries and, and economy. Um, but, but that's, that's going to happen uh, on, a, uh, on, a, on a wide scale. And, and in a similar vein, uh, there will be a lot of uh, insolvency restructuring uh, that goes on as, as people, um, I mean, Gord, Gord's, uh, Gord has made a, a lot of really good points um, today, but uh, the, the whole issue of debt, I, I think, is, uh, is, is maybe one of my um, key takeaways. And um, uh, the, uh, the restructuring of, of those entities that, um, that have run into uh, cash flow issues is, is, is you know, there, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of that. Um, I, I wish I had a crystal ball and, and I could maybe give uh, participants a, uh, you know, a few stock tips. Um, uh, I've never actually been good at that. Um, maybe that's why I'm a lawyer. Uh, but um, but those opportunities are are certainly uh, are certainly out there, and 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 we are we're seeing an uptick in our uh, M and A activity at, at the firm for sure. I imagine so. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, that comes to the close of some of our 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 questions, either from our participants or or ones that we thought would be would be decent for a chat today. And we're going to lighten it up at the end because you know bonfires sometimes just need to be less serious. So we're gonna uh -huh. give it a whirl. Uh, here comes the rapid fire session. Um, I'm gonna start with you, Peter. Um, and then for each question, Gord, you're gonna answer it too. So are both of you ready? You think you can do this in like one sentence or less for each of the questions? For sure. Excellent, okay. So um, Peter, top lesson learned or takeaway during COVID? Uh, human beings are resilient. Um, we have we've 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 seen the ability of of of, of really uh, the world to uh, you talk about a pivot, um, and uh, and and so resiliency uh, and and our ability to uh, to be resilient it was it was my takeaway. Okay, Gord. Peter, you stole it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say innovation. Awesome. Innovation is everywhere, and uh, I'm just excited to see how things evolve. Okay, Peter. Hardest thing to adapt to. Uh, I, I think the uh, the social distancing. Um, we we're social animals, and um, and people, you know, not being able to shake hands, uh, not being able to hug your friends, um, not being able to chat around the uh, the, uh, the 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 water tower um, at, at work has 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 been hard on everybody, introverts and extroverts. Okay, Gord. Anything to add? I, I echo it. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a certified coach in hockey and football, and I can tell you, I get a lot from from supporting youth sport, and I miss it absolutely terribly. And I know there are a lot of parents who miss it too because it was a great uh, time fill for kids. So, uh, absolutely, it's it's just that personal connection. Okay, so I'm going to let you go first on this one, Gord. Uh, best tool to stay connected. I'm going to give you two. Um, first, the dinner table. 
Uh, I don't think I've had more dinners with my entire family, um, you know, in the prior year than I have had during COVID because again, activities are, are limited, right? So man, I, I got really funny kids, um, super proud of them. Um, se secondly, um, I would say any type of video conferencing. Um, one of the things that we took for granted was, you know, connection and culture in the organization. And, and these video conference tools are phenomenal. You know, I'm getting line of sight and, and feedback from staff that I may not have seen, you know, months at a time. So I just love the, the platform. Uh, I don't think it displaces personal to person contact, but it really does give people access um, and, and gives them a platform to be heard. Awesome. Okay. Peter, um, best tool to stay connected. Uh, I've got clients all over the world. And, and so my, my number one go-to for connectivity has been WhatsApp. Um, has, was, was pre-COVID uh, and, and remains. It, it's just, uh, it's widely used outside of, of Canada. So um, it's, it's been great. And, you know, it's free. Doesn't okay. get better than that. And then sticking with you, Peter, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Uh, I, I, as a young kid, I had all of the parts of the brain memorized. I was, I was going to be a brain surgeon. Um, then I realized that involved blood. Um, so, so that was my pivot. <laughs> How about you, Gord? What were you going to be when you were growing up? I wanted to be a lawyer. So I'm, yeah. <laughs> it's not too late, Gord. <laughs> it's not too late. <laughs> awesome. Gord, how about, uh, ocean or mountains? Ocean. Love the water. Peter, how about you? Yeah, I'm a sailor. All right, so Peter, wine or beer? Uh, I'm a cocktail guy. Yeah, right. Negroni, Negroni is my go-to. Excellent. Gord, how about you? Wine. A nice okay. wine makes everything better. I'll just mm. add in, I'm a wine lover too. I can drink a cold beer and I don't mind a cocktail. Uh, if you had a choice, a book or a podcast, Gord, you go first. Well, I'm torn. I, I, I listen to podcasts in the car when I'm running, when I'm working out. Uh, but you know, you know you're know you relaxing when you've got a book in your hand and yeah. the feet are up. So I'm gonna say both. That sounds awesome. How about you, Peter? Uh, uh, my, my favorite's actually a book and a laptop because I, I like to fact check. And uh, <laughs> it, it, when, when, when people throw out a, a concept uh, that they may not explore fully in the book, I, I like to like look that. So, look that up. So it sometimes takes me a long time to finish a book. That's hilarious. I love it. Okay. Um, so then Peter, final words of advice. Uh, well, as Winston Churchill uh, said, when you find yourself walking through hell, the best thing to do is keep walking. And uh, I, I think that's very much where, where we are. But uh, I, I think I would add uh, to walk uh, mindfully. Um, it, this, is, this is the time for reflection. You know, to the extent that um, uh, our, our business has been down in, in, in my own uh, uh, work group, we're, we're taking the opportunity to retool. Um, uh, we're doing a lot of uh, continuing professional development. Um, we're, we're doing some blue skying. We're, we're building relationships with uh, uh, people in our, in our supply chain. Um, so, you know, let, let's try and, and make uh, lemonade out of uh, the COVID lemon. That's terrific. Thank you, Peter. And Gord, how about you? Final words of advice. You know, I would say embrace uniqueness. You know, br bring it out, hold it up, hoist it above your shoulder. Um, and I would also say work from a world of abundance. Yeah. Because we, we just don't know whatever's going to happen. And, and those, those relationships you build and how you treat people and how you interact, you know, you, 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 you harvest what you sow. I couldn't agree more the idea of abundance that there's space for everybody at the table there's enough innovation connection collaboration for everybody and when you make space incredible things happen so that's terrific thank you both of you both peter and gord you know we are really privileged to have you on our board of directors at tech alliance and having this conversation with you today is a terrific way to spend uh, you know a wednesday morning um to excel through uncertainty, we, you know, we do need to be informed and attempt to be prepared. And you've given great examples of, you know, preparation now and preparation in the future. And, you know, what, what we should have started doing 20 years ago is, you know, let's start now. So I love some of the anecdote. I love the really specific examples that you gave that are, that are perfect takeaways for, for those on the call. I also love the fact that we're recording this and um, 
we've referenced technology and connectedness and, and Zooming and that this recording is going to be available for people to reference, um, you know, now and, and later to come back to it and, and rethink about the preparation that's still required if, you know, if you're putting out fires. So um, we, we like to say that bonfire chats are always fun with more friends. So we invite everyone to join us uh, two weeks from now on July 8th. Uh, for conquering the cash flow with uh, Tech Alliance board members Chris Dowding of MNP and Dave Brebner of Mobiles. Um, you can register online and fire off your most pressing questions about how to secure, manage, and maintain cash flow and effective crisis management skills to achieve business success. And so that's it, everyone. We're wishing you a joy filled Canada Day next week, and we hope you have an incredible day. Be well and take good care. Thanks so much.